Giganotosaurus carolini, one of the largest and most notorious flesh eaters that ever walked the earth. This week on Paleomania. Hello everyone, I'm Ryan the Raptor Guy, and welcome to this week's episode of Paleomania. Before we get to our main topic of the video, I'd like to give a little update to one of my previous videos that I did a little while ago. You may remember that I recently did a video talking about a recently discovered dinosaur mummy of a notosaur. At the time, that notosaur didn't have a genus or species name. We didn't know if it was a new species. We thought it, would, we thought it might be, but we weren't sure. Well, that notosaur officially has a name, Boreapelta markmichelii. As if discovering a well-preserved notosaur mummy wasn't exciting enough, scientists also found melanosomes preserved. Melanosomes are pigment-producing cells, and they're responsible for producing color in the skin and fur of mammals, the skin and scales of reptiles, and the scales and feathers of birds. What the research on the melanosomes revealed is that Boreapelta was actually reddish colored on the top with a what appears to be a pale underbelly. So this appears to be a case of countershading. In nature, we often see animals that are countershaded. They're, they have a darker color on the top and a lighter color on the bottom. That's to help them stay out of sight from predators. Whoever thought we'd be talking about what color dinosaurs were? <laughs> Who knew? This episode is going to be a little bit different than the typical episodes that we've been doing. Why, you ask? Well, believe it or not, this is Paleomania's 10th episode! <laughs> to celebrate our 10th episode of Paleomania, I'm going to be talking about a species of dinosaur that was recommended by Bennett Fender, Giganotosaurus. While Giganotosaurus isn't a hot off the press discovery, it's still relatively recent, considering it was discovered and announced in the early 1990s, so let's talk about it. For most people, Tyrannosaurus rex is the apex king of the dinosaurs, and with good reason. At 43 feet long, around 13 to 15 feet tall, and weighing 9 tons, Tyrannosaurus was a force to be reckoned with. Its 12-inch teeth and strong bite made it a very powerful and efficient predator. But Tyrannosaurus met some competition to its rule in the early 1990s when scientists discovered another large carnivorous theropod in South America. Giganotosaurus, not to be confused with Gigantosaurus, which is a sauropod, was a large bipedal theropod that lived during the antediluvian epoch from around 6,000 to 4,350 years ago in what is now South America. Fossils of this beast show that it was about the same size as Tyrannosaurus rex, at around 40 to 43 feet long, around 13 to 15 feet tall, and it would have weighed around 9 to 10 tons, give or take. Like most other theropods, aside from Spinosaurus, obviously, Giganotosaurus walked on two muscular legs, using its long tail for balance. Though previous studies on large predatory dinosaurs like Giganotosaurus suggested that they could run up to 30 miles per hour, more recent studies published earlier this year suggest that large predatory dinosaurs would have been incapable of proper running. Instead, they would have been fast walkers, maybe able to move around 12 miles per hour, more or less. I don't know if that really makes much of a difference, considering most of us can't run that fast. So, it's still gonna eat you if it gets the chance. Even though 12 miles per hour may sound kind of slow, it's still a lot faster than the prey that it was mostly eating. Giganotosaurus was a Carcharodontosaurid, meaning that it was closely related to other Carcharodontosaurids like Carcharodontosaurus itself, Mapusaurus, Tyrannotitan, and even Acrocanthosaurus. Giganotosaurus' genus name means giant southern lizard. Its species name, Carolini, is named after its discoverer, Reuben D. Carolini. Reuben Carolini discovered Giganotosaurus in 1993, the same year Jurassic Park came out. However, it wasn't until a couple of years when the scientists had studied it extensively enough to know what they were dealing with that they could announce it in 1995. After this new species was announced, 
People were astonished that there was a predatory dinosaur that rivaled Tyrannosaurus rex in size. So how do these two carnivores compare? Firstly, Giganotosaurus and Tyrannosaurus probably never would have met. They lived in two completely different parts of the pre-flood supercontinent that we call Rodinia. Giganotosaurus, as I've mentioned, lived in South America, whereas Tyrannosaurus would have lived in North America. Though they look kind of similar at first glance, there are many things that set these two predatory theropods apart. Tyrannosaurus had a stocky body build, while Giganotosaurus, on the other hand, was more gracile. The largest known skull of Tyrannosaurus rex is around 4.8 feet long and filled with dozens of 12-inch conical-shaped teeth that would have been used to puncture and crush bone and flesh and whatever else got in the way. Gig Giganotosaurus, on the other hand, had a skull that was just over 5 feet long, and instead of railroad spike-shaped teeth, the teeth of Giganotosaurus were thin and knife-like. The teeth were serrated front and back, and they would have been better at slicing through flesh, rather than crunching like Tyrannosaurus rex would do. T-Rex's famously short arms only had two fingers on each hand, whereas Giganotosaurus's arms, which were slightly longer, would have had three fingers on each hand. Though Giganotosaurus differed from Tyrannosaurus rex in many ways, it was by no means inferior. God gave Giganotosaurus and other members of its created kind special features that helped it to th not only survive, but thrive in its habitat and take on specific types of prey. Fossil evidence from plants and other animals that are found with Giganotosaurus reveal that Giganotosaurus probably lived in a wetland environment that was filled with lush vegetation that was capable of feeding all the herbivores that this animal would have needed to hunt to survive. Though Tyrannosaurus was stockier than Giganotosaurus, evidence seems to suggest that it would have hunted prey its own size or smaller, like Triceratops or Hadrosaurus, such as Edmontosaurus. Giganotosaurus, while it would have undoubtedly hunted animals smaller than itself from time to time, some scientists believe it also would have hunted prey much, much larger than itself. I'm talking about sauropods. There were many different species of long-necked sauropods thriving in the areas that Giganotosaurus inhabited, including one of the biggest sauropods that ever existed, Argentinosaurus. Not only was Argentinosaurus one of the largest sauropods that ever existed, but it may have been one of the largest land animals that ever walked the earth. Some estimates put it at around 88 to 110 tons in weight, depending on who you ask. And it may have stretched to over 130 feet in length. This is an enormous animal. How did a 9-ton Giganotosaurus possibly take down an animal over 10 times its own size? Well, recent discoveries of a closely related species reveal that Giganotosaurus and its cousins may have hunted in packs. Between 1997 and 2001, scientists in Argentina discovered not one, but at least seven individuals of a Carcharodontosaurid closely related to Giganotosaurus that were all buried in the same place. In 2006, they named that new species Mapusaurus. While we can't be 100% certain, it's possible that creatures like Mapusaurus and Giganotosaurus would have hunted in gangs to bring down prey larger than themselves. This is where the difference between Giganotosaurus and Tyrannosaurus come into play. Giganotosaurus used its meat slicing teeth to rip chunks of flesh off of its prey, kind of like a great white shark. A well-placed bite would have allowed the Giganotosaurus to simply sit back and wait for its prey to succumb to shock or loss of blood or exhaustion, or all three. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, we read that God created all the different kinds of animals, including the original members of Giganotosaurus's created kind, to be vegetarians. So why are dinosaurs like Giganotosaurus so well designed to hunt and kill? One word. Sin. Mankind's sin in the Garden of Eden brought death, disease, suffering, and carnivory into the world. Knowing in advance that Adam and Eve would sin, God seems to have already placed the necessary genetic information into the genes of the original members of Giganotosaurus's created kind. That way, they would be capable of adapting to life in a post-fall world and a diet of meat.
Even in a fallen state, God's design and forethought can be clearly seen in all of his creatures, including Giganotosaurus, the giant lizard of the South. That's all the time we have for today. As always, be sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe below for more content just like this, follow me on Instagram, check me out at my website, ryantheraptorguide.wordpress.com, and remember, every fossil has a story to tell. See you next time. Thank you.